and get this, everybody who was going to downsize into perhaps like Fort Lee and Edgewater, these are these like a great apartment, townhouse, complex buildings right off of the Hudson River, um, amazing ferries to New York City. They haven't opened the buildings. They well, can't even get in. Well, that is my, my struggle right now because um, it's vertical living. But just to answer your question, so Manhattan is an interesting place right now because, because we're not able to show and most sellers are not still not willing to just give it away, right? So the people who are making sight unseen offers to, are tending to come in very low. And most that are 10, 15, sometimes 20% below the asking prices, those deals are generally not getting done. Sellers are like, you know what? We'll wait because we don't know for sure what the market will bring once we open up. And inventory is so low, there's no options. Now, again, that could change the minute that we get the phase two, like we can put all this inventory and flood the market, but we were fairly undersupplied before. So we have no inventory, mortgage rates are at an all time low, but there are real factors that are keeping price, we're not sure may keep prices down. So sellers right now are negotiating three to seven, maybe sometimes 10%. New, de not that much, right? New development is negotiating, right? So they, they will negotiate price, but they'll also negotiate on other things, concessions, common charges, mansion tax, closing costs. Those, those are more like 11, 12%. So you, the answer is yes, you, there, there is opportunity in the city, depending on how it's priced, depending on the seller's situation, um, a lot of sellers now that I have really do want to get to the burbs and they have to sell first before they can afford to buy. So those are more realistic sellers that we're going to price it right and, and hopefully not have to negotiate too much because we're going to take the environment into consideration. So yes, there are opportunities, but I wouldn't say in all circumstances, there are like incredible deals, but there might be. We're really wait, we're really on a wait and see. Um, for when we are able to resume showings. Um, um, Alana, um, what would you say, you know, I hear it's an active market, so that's great, but what are the challenges or the concerns that you're having right now in your market? I mean, really just, I literally actually, as we're on this panel, I got an email from somebody saying, we were thinking about moving and now we're ready to go. <laughs> and it's, so it's, it's really they're finding. They're watching the panel and they're realizing. They're, well, I don't know. It's, it's, like they, it's like they're, and, it, and I'm, you know, <laughs> the challenge is it's finding, you know, it's finding, finding a place, you know, it's finding a place for everyone that, that really wants it. I mean, even the rentals um, are very stressful right now. And normally, you know, I don't, I do a few here and there, but it's not this hot rental market. And even the summer, we really don't have a summer market, but we had a summer market this year, which was sort of unprecedented. So the challenges are really, you know, waiting for that inventory, you know, sort of like stalking everybody and trying to find out like what's coming, what's coming and letting everybody know, all right, things are coming, you know, coming down the pipe. Um, and then really getting people, as everybody was echoing what everybody was saying, really getting people in the mindset of like, all right, you know, once something comes, you're really going to have to like focus and think about if you want it. And, you know, it can be a little bit stressful. And I think a lot of it, one, one of, um, one of, uh, one of my customers that I've been working with for a while, she calls it real estate therapy. Um, and it's just, <laughs> it's just sort of, you know, we, we talk are it therapists out. as well. We, yeah. and she says, thank you. The other night she said, thank you for the real estate therapy. And I was like, oh, I love that. I love that. It's wonderful. So I think the challenges are, you know, people are kind of, I think people are kind of getting really, you know, stressed out about, you know, leaving the city and having to go. Um, but I have seen some people, you know, in the last couple of weeks sort of saying, all right, you know what, we're going to, we're going to take a pause. We're going to look, we're not going to make like a impulsive decision um, that might change. You know, I think it also depends on school people who have, you know, really little kids. It's not as quite, I mean, it's still stressful. Don't I have three kids. It's all stressful. All this whole thing, is, you know, with everything, um, even if you don't have kids, <laughs> it's still stressful right now. Um, 
but the people who have little kids have a little more flexibility because they're not worried about school. But the people that have to get in for September for school, um, you know, it's really, that's really something that I'm, you know, very much focused on getting those people that have the kids and just, you know, making sure they're doing all the diligence that they need. And, you know, out here, the schools are, it's, you know, we could talk about, you know, schools, but it's very, you just go to the school that you're zoned for. So it's, it's, you know, you buy a house, it, you go to that school and it's very, it's very simple. And I think all these suburbs are very similar. I know there's parts of New Jersey, I know it's like a little bit different, but um, so I think that's kind of stressful. It's the people who have kids who are really, you know, trying to get, and, and getting full green space. I know people, right now things are opening up a little bit, um, like local preserve has opened up. There was a line, I've never seen a line to get into the preserve like I've seen before. Um, so getting people some space, um, but really just getting in for school, I think is something that I, I know we're all finding that challenge that it's just, you know, cause you're, but at least in, at least in my market, um, you can, I mean, literally you could come in like August 31st or September 1st. And as long as you have a contract, you can get into the school. So you don't have to worry about that. I mean, you could come in the middle of the year. Fine. It's just, you know, people want to have their kids settled. There's a lot of uncertainty right now. And, um, so that's, that's kind of what I'm, you know, keeping me up at night. <laughs> no, I mean, it's, it's a real, in fact, we could do a whole, um, webinar on that. I mean, I have two kids that are homeschooling right now and it is very <laughs> stressful and you know in Manhattan um it's not as easy right we're not we we have some zones but it's not as easy that you just go to the school that you're zoned for um but what I do think which is the con right but I think the pro of New York City schools is that there really is something for everyone so mm -hmm. if your kid has special a special need or a special talent or you know, there's a school for them. And I always tell that to people like, no, it's not easy. It's a, it's a more challenging process, but you really can find an environment that's right for your specific child. And I think that's an important, I got, you know, I got to do a little ride. No, I, I 100% agree with you. There's, <laughs> there's so many wonderful options in the city. Um, just, you know, it's, yeah. it's, and my it's, kids are in two different schools and one kid is doing one school is doing homeschooling beautifully and the other not as well. So, you know, there's so many different things. Now we don't have a lot of time left, but we do have some questions in the chat um, that I want to try and get to. Um, uh, Francie, this is for Westchester. Um, because sellers are motivated during, during, due to these financial, you know, this environment, are you seeing a spike in, in I know everyone's inventory poor, but are you seeing more inventory on the market this year than you did last year at this time or no? Absolutely not. Um, oh. We weren't able to photograph it pre-pandemic. And in some, in lots of cases, there's a dozen, more than a dozen of these stories, listings that went into contract during the pandemic, before the pandemic and were great deals and good to go, buyer not walking. Seller gave back to the deposits and said, I'm not moving in the pandemic. Mm, and now we reach out to those, uh, we've had we we've each had a lot of those, and when we reach out to those clients, and I have a few, they said, you know what, I'm not even sure I'm going. I might wait till January. I might wait another year. They were all obviously moving to condos or the city, something in the city, and they like their space. And some many have kids home from medical school, graduate school, college, mm -hmm. and they in the end they needed the space. So inventory is not is is much lower. You know I. Westchester County is huge, so it's hard to give you a stat overall. But in in my marketplace my, that I focus in, it's it's down like twenty percent from the same time last year. And um, <clears throat> before, even when houses, I have some houses on the market where the seller gets a great offer. I have one today, and he won't he over ask, and he decided to stay. <laughs> ah, so the buyers are real, but not the sellers all the time. So that's exactly. an interesting yeah, thing. Yeah. I would say a significant percentage of them are, are very nervous. I don't you know. They can't, they can't I, I, touch I, things and feel where they're going. In, right. in the case of many of them, they can't go look at rentals. They can't, it sounds familiar to Stacey. It, it, yeah. Her Stacey's parents are in this boat. You can't go look. So you're actually giving up your family home and you don't have a place to go to. Right. That's uh, crazy. Um, and someone asked, are you in your towns, this is clearly not a question for Manhattan, are we still seeing teardowns 
where people want the town and love the land, but want to build. I assume when you see that more in Greenwich. Oh, we are seeing it. It's, you know, it goes back to what I said, the, the pottery barn. So any home right now that does not have higher than nine foot ceilings is just looked upon not favorably. Um, it's, I don't know, did everybody just grow taller? But <laughs> the ceiling house is subject to being knocked down or it is looked on very poo-poo. So yes, knockdowns and rebuilds or renovations, or I just say lopping off the second floor is a possibility and just putting um, higher, higher ceilings on the first floor and then going up, absolutely. You know, the fact of the matter is if you drive around town or when I drive around town, there is so much renovation. And I think we touched upon this before. Some people are saying, hey, you know what? I can't move. And we also had that phenomenon of- oh, I think we lost, buyers, did we lose you? The buyers in Greenwich will buy um, Greenwich. And the, what they're saying now is there's no, we can't move up, we can't move sideways, jobs, et cetera. So they're renovating their homes. So driving around town, you see a lot of knockdowns, a lot of big renovations going on. And that too is affecting our inventory because people aren't, they're not selling. Where we usually did have those the typical, the ones would move into the two millions, the twos into the threes, there's a bottleneck. Yeah, I can comment on that too, if it's okay. I think that, you know, I think probably even nationally, we, we saw, we, we have been experiencing a shortage of new construction. Um, after the crash in 08, there was a national shortage of new construction. And I think if we look back, the majority of mortgages taken out over the last year were millennial buyers. And I'm saying it again, even on the, on the very end of millennials, and there is an obsession with new, obsession with new, renovated, move in. And um, if you're a buyer looking for a better deal, don't look just for new. That is the literal, everybody said it, and I'm gonna say it again. Look for the ugliest house you can find. <laughs> On a nice block. And, and, and remember that you're buying the property and the location because the house can change. The other two well, things- I always can't. tell that to people too. I'm like, you can renovate, but you can't change the view or the location or the thing. We got a very, I know we were running out of time. We got a very good question. Um, Obviously, we know the pandemic has created new buyers. Um, are we seeing an increase in sellers due to job loss or economic anxiety? Now, I will take one um, of those answers and say, it. thankfully, the majority of my sellers um, are not in a, an economic, it's not based on economic decision, so that, 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 which is good because they don't have to fire sell it, right? We can wait it out so we can get a stable market. Um, so thankfully that is not the majority of my sellers. Are you seeing that in your markets? Um, Alana, are you seeing that in, in, in Long Island? You know, not, we, we were seeing some deals that, you know, as Francis was saying, with some deals that were falling apart with people losing their jobs. Um, we're not seeing that so much. Uh, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's sort of strange what's going on with the market because we have these crazy markets, but then there's all this stuff going on in the economy and, you know, there are, is real job loss. So I think that um, it's sort of, we're not really seeing it that much. I mean, we're, I guess we're, we're very lucky. Um, that yeah, could I change. Know. I think, you know, obviously the climate's changing, but, you know, we have a lot of uh, families out here with there's you know, it's a good night. And there's a lot of people like with, you know, two working, um, two working parents. So I think that kind of, you know, offsets it a little bit. Um, but that's something that I definitely, you know, I worry about it. Wow. It's just started raining really hard. I don't know if it's raining <laughs> anywhere else with you guys yeah. all of a sudden. Like, that, I, I think I left my daughter's bike outside. <laughs> um, <laughs> These are real problems. Well, your daughter. That, that, that certainly adds a level of, you know, of pressure as yeah, well. Yeah, I think that mm -hmm. people, I mean, when they're buying, you know, I, and like I've said to people, you know, I have some people that really, you know, want to rent and they said, you know, I'm a little bit worried about my job. And I think I say to them, that's a really good idea. I will find you a rental because I don't want people to be in a situation where they're going to have all this stress because of the fact that they have, you know, a mortgage. And I, I, I say to them, you know, and that's why we are seeing a lot more renters. because I think there's like two camps of people, at least that I'm seeing the people that want to buy and they're like, just buy. And then there's the people that want to rent that are like, you know what? We're not quite sure. Like there's some stuff going on we want to rent, we want to try it out. And 
I think there's, they're both, you know, equally good solutions. And so 